Uh, and by the way, today, I'm kind of like, I wanted to make today not super dense because we have a midterm next week, so I hope it's not too slow. You can't 2x me right now, unfortunately. Uh, okay, last thing we're going to do. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. Ah, I do something like this set of L or something, and it makes a list version. So that would ma mean is there a set? Let's see. Is there a constructor for set that takes a collection? So let's try that. I mean, it might work. This is me being very verbose. So that's an excellent question. So let's try and guess what the syntax might be. Maybe we'll just bypass this all together, and we'll try and do it over here. Uh, set string w equals new, hash set string. Uh, and then where do you, th oh, I don't really need this string, sorry. It's an old habit. Uh, it's only been a couple years since that was possible. So set string, uh, word set. Okay, so where do you think we should try and do this? Here, right? Yeah. So let's just try it. So let's do W, uh, and then, that's a great question. Uh, we'll do word set dot size. So it seems to compile fine, and I bet you it'll work. Let's check it out. 964. So indeed, that works as well. Now, if we look here, you can actually see, uh, if we do new hash set, oh, I won't do it, okay. Uh, list of, okay, it won't show me the signature, but basically the set, it does indeed have something similar. So excellent question, okay? All right. Um, so even better than this loop. All right, next up, let's build ourselves a map. Uh, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we want to find the number of times that the words lottery, the, and Babylon appear. Uh, and so what we're going to do is create a list of all the words we care about. Jeez, I need to stop doing that. All right. Anyway, lottery, the, and Babylon. And we're gonna have it print out how many times those three words appear. This again is a common pattern that you should have seen at some point whenever you were doing uh, Python, and if you were in E7, hopefully you did something at least somewhat similar. Now we'll notice that the signature of this method is just a monster. Like, look, I think I put it on the screen. Uh, this is very normal for Java. Uh, and there's nothing. I mean, it gets worse than that for sure. Uh, but it's something we'll live with. So to do this, uh, what we're going to do is build a map that tells us, uh, given a string, how many times it occurs. So we'll say map string integer, and we'll call this thing like counts uh, equals new. Let's say, I don't know, hash map, because those are slightly more popular than the other one. Uh, and so we say new hash map string integer. Now we'll go through each of the strings in the, each word for string w in our list of words. Actually, no, I'm going to do it in targets. Uh, I'm calling them targets. So for each string and targets, there are other ways of doing this, but this is the easiest way to write it clearly. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put in my dictionary a map from that string to what for counting. So all my targets, how many do we know of so far? In our words, none. So this basically says, um, make a note that we have seen none of the words. And then what I can do is say for string s in words, uh, and now I'm going to get each of them. So I'm going to say counts.get s. Okay, so that's my uh, old count. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to do, and you could do again the stuff on one line, but I'm just writing it very verbosely. So I'm going to say counts.put what? Someone said old count plus one, but that's not quite enough. You also need to specify what we're associating with it. So we need to say s, comma, old count plus one. So what that does is it says the current word we're looking at. Say the word is potato, okay? So we'll say for string s in words, uh, we're going to get the count, uh, and then we're going to increment the count. However, this code has one minor issue, which is that it's actually checking to see, uh, let's say it gets a word that's potato. Is potato the Babylon or uh, what's the other one? lottery? No. So this code's going to behave in some weird way. In fact, let's see what happens. So I'm going to return counts. Yeah. Get. It takes a uh, it takes a thing on the left hand side, a string. How does it work? Ah, how is it implemented? Great question. So abstract data type. We literally don't care, right? So get. Before, git took an index, but since this is a map, right? We said it's a map. It's using a different semantics. And so for now, we're just going to trust that somehow it works, and we'll talk about how it works in about four weeks. Okay, okay? that's the glory of abstract data types. So when we try and run this, we ran into some kind of issue. Let's see, what is it? 
uh, no pointer exception. So we got a no pointer exception because it tried to get the word like say horse, but horse wasn't there. So instead, if we really wanted to be verbose, we would do something like this. Uh, if counts dot contains key s, then do all this stuff. So basically, we're only going to actually augment it if the word actually exists. Okay. So this is somewhat more verbose than real Java code, but real Java code is going to be about that long. So when you run it, you finally get that D occurs 172 times, Babylon 6, and Lottery 12. OK, so any questions about this before we proceed? Yeah? There is a more concise way, but uh, I don't want to do it right now. Yeah. It won't, the more concise ways won't be that much shorter, though, I'll warn you. Yeah? Uh, do, well, I did one for loop to set up all the counts, and then another to go through the words. Yeah. Yes. So you could actually do. You don't have to do this pre-step, right? You could do something similar to that earlier, right? Yeah. So to compare what we did here, right? So that was just the old. That was the the finding unique words. We don't really need to go over that, but hey, just pointing out we're using this new loop. Uh, but this is the version I just wrote, uh, more or less. Um, and I want to compare it to the Python equivalent, OK? Because there's some interesting difference here, differences. So this is the Java version. The Python version, of course, does not have declared types. Uh, it also has something very interesting here. Even if you've never seen Python, in fact, maybe it's more interesting to do if you've never done Python, uh, what do we notice about this line? Word counts equals no dictionary. What's this? Like, this is just, somehow we're creating a dictionary in Python with just some symbols. Whereas in Java, we have to say, like, this whole thing. Hey, this is the abstract data type I want. Hey, this is the specific implementation I want. Here, it's just give me a dictionary. Okay. Then we go through this uh, dictionary, and I say for every item and the targets, I'm going to set them to zero. And again, you could do this shorter in Python as well, of course. Uh, and then I basically say for s in words, if it's actually in the word counts, increment its value by one. So we notice that the way to index into a dictionary is a lot like an array. Whereas in Java, we have to actually call these methods uh, get and put, right? Get put. Uh, and then finally, we can return it. Okay. 